When you hear the name Steve O, the first things that comes to your mind are jackass, epic injuries, and partying hard, like doing coke with Mike Tyson hard. Steve O's a movie star, pop culture icon, and host of the incredibly successful Steve O's Wild Ride. But you probably don't think about his animal activism, stand-up comedy, or his battle with sex addiction. On this episode of The Mike Busey Show, Mike sits down with his longtime friend, and the two discuss their friendship, Steve O's sobriety, their jackass adventures, and never before told stories like their struggle with frequent urination. Oh, hell yeah! Come on, man! Welcome to the Sausage Castle, the wildest home in America. A private 80-acre estate located only minutes from Walt Disney World just outside of Orlando, Florida. The home of the party legend and self-made entertainment entrepreneur, Mike Boosie, who has hosted the wildest and craziest parties and events for the last 20 plus years. You have seen us featured on Netflix, TMZ, MTV, Vice, and much more. A second home to many of the biggest entertainers, athletes, and rock stars in the business. You never know who will show up. A place to play, work, and create. Countless movies, TV shows, and music videos have been produced and filmed at the Sausage Castle. This 80-acre entertainment complex has anything and everything you could imagine. Endless fun and wild activities to enjoy. This is the ultimate Florida experience and it's always a good vibe. It's like an adult summer camp where the pursuit of life, liberty, and happiness is alive and well. Come experience it yourself. Become a member of MikeBusey.com. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, or whatever the fuck you identify as, my name is Mike Busey, but you already knew that. And I have the pleasure to be sitting next to me, the man, the myth, the legend, an actor, a comic, an artist, an author, a clown, a stuntman, an animal lover, and my friend, Steve-O. Yeah, dude. Thank you so much for coming and being on our podcast. Dude, I love it, man. Thank you for having me, and thank you for all of the wonderful friendship and, and special like help that you've given me over the years. The pleasure has been all mine. It is uh, truly an honor when I see you over these 20 plus years evolve and become the beautiful butterfly that the Stevo, the, the, the everything you've done and you've conquered and gone through, you're, you're truly, uh, as other intelligent people that observe you from a distance, know you're, you're much more than just that crazy jackass. And you, you have such a huge heart and the things that you do, you, you've dedicated your entire life to entertaining the world. And I can obviously relate to that. And I always have a sweet spot in my heart for you. Thanks, and man. You, you have always been a good friend. And uh, I, I, owe, I owe a lot to you. Because you, uh, well, yeah, our affiliation has definitely brought me into all new endeavors several right. times. We met... Uh, 2006 while we were filming jackass number two is that right i believe so we had talked because i was actually trying to think about myself and i remember 
you calling me about Manny and David Weathers and saying, hey, I got some bros uh, that need some bookings because I was I was doing stuff with the Margeras and a lot of the other jackass crew. Well, I, I'm pretty sure that it was me who introduced you to the jackass crew when we were Correct. filming. Because we would... With every single like jackass movie, with, with oddly the exception of this most recent one, but the jackass TV show, the uh, jackass one, jackass two, jackass three, always we filmed in Florida, and always we stayed by uh, uh is it UCF University UCF. Central? Right across the street from Knight's Library. The Knight's Library was the bar. Oh, yes. It was, uh, if anyone is familiar with the Central Florida area, if you went to a college bar anywhere near there, you knew that the Jackass crew was in town. They were burning down the villages, just just oh, li- literally having the greatest moments in history of moments. Well, what was crazy, it was, it was 2006, and I, I feel like I, uh, you know, I, I brought you, the, you know, in, into the mix with the Jackass gang, and um, I, I somehow believe that that kick-started a lot of activity for you. Oh, and, it definitely did. And that's why whenever your name comes up or anyone ever asks, like, how did you get into the business and what was, like, one of your big – like quote unquote breaks, I always give you credit for that. Oh, because how about that? You uh, y- you opened up so many doors, and uh, it. I mean, you'd be surprised. You, you, as you already know, you you are a legend, and you're uh, the most humble with it. But you have been to every country. You've seen everything. You've done everything. Ah. I don't know what you haven't done. It it'd be easier to say what you haven't done than what you have done. Well, thanks, man. I, I, I've only been to, uh, I believe, 58 countries. Well, that's 58 more than me. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it, it's just an interesting thing that 2006, when we linked up, we were filming Jackass Number 2, The Knight's Library. But then, four years later, in 2010... One, we were filming Jackass 3D at the Knights Library, but what was different in 2010, they had like Twitter, Facebook, yes. like so. When the guys went into the Knights Library in 2010, within like five minutes, the place was poof, because everybody knew. Like, and here, here's another weird paradox. That same week, I had a gig with Three Six Mafia in the very parking lot of that hotel. And for those who don't know, most productions and movies are done, you know, very, uh, a certain way with the Dick house and with Jeff and trip and everyone y'all would have, uh, y'all have always had this sense of camaraderie that would, uh, would trample over anyone else. It was so organic and real. And y'all literally took over, the entire same like, hotel town. every time. Same hotel every time Fourth we shoot. Floor. We shoot. And um, that I mean, that to to put into perspective the legendary stuff that happened in this hotel, um, the uh, f- from the TV show days. It was that same hotel where um, they did the treadmill bit, where they're like fall down the treadmill and the treadmill spitting them off. They completely broke the treadmill. Same hotel where. Um, the Valentines, where you know you had to like the, yeah the, the Valentines had the, yeah. the, the and it was supposed to be Mike Tyson punching through the Valentines, but like they couldn't get Mike Tyson, so they ha- had it hooked up to like a or whatever like a robot arm. Uh, what else in that hotel? Uh, it was in that the hotel. Balls the, in the, the an, elevator. An, 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 the balls in the elevator. The anaconda ball pit. Um, dude, we were uh, they did crazy the same exact hotel. Um, okay, we went to like a Chili's or something. Because so, we, we would go to we would go to like Chili's. We're, we're, it was we're, we're, Ruby Tuesday. Maybe it was right maybe. there. It was the wait, Ruby wait, Tuesday wait. in there. Whatever the restaurant was, it doesn't even matter. But there was there was a point when we had just eaten a lunch, and we go and we're all getting back into the van, and and the van's just, and this kid just like like running, he's all out of breath, and uh, and, and he says to Johnny Knoxville, he says. 
he says, dude, I would like, I, 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 want, I want to be an actor, and like, and, and, and you never, you just never know. So I just ran, and here I want you to have this because, because you just never know. And it was the, the kid handed Knoxville his black and white eight by ten headshot because he just he didn't know if like that could have like opened up the door, created the opportunity. Knoxville graciously accepted this this headshot, this photograph. And uh, I'm in the back of the van. I'm just like, yo, yo, yo Knox, dude, let me, uh, you know, l let me get that. And um, we drive the short drive to the hotel. We're getting out of the van, and uh, like, like we're like as, as we're going to the hotel, I say, okay, dudes, start timing me now. And and they're time they're 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 timing me. I go running down the hall, like ar like around the corner, and I just start jacking off. <laughs> Right, like I literally blow a load onto the kid's face on the eight by ten on the on the headshot. I come running back into the lobby, like stick the stick it to the window of the lobby with all the jizz on it. I like smear it around and stick it there, and it, less than two minutes ha had gone by. And what, what's even more epic is that that kid's face was stuck to the window for the entire rest of the trip <laughs> that we that, were there. Nobody took it down. I wonder if he, <laughs> did he ever know? I don't know. He got a lot of exposure. <laughs> Man, what, that's, that's a great, like you, you uh, that hotel and that parking lot of that area, I remember. Oh, that was the same hotel that, that we filmed paper cuts in. Yeah. That guy, uh, Paper Cuts, was in a, a hotel room there. Uh, the puppet stuff with Pond Yeah, oh, absolutely. Dick, the, 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 yeah, the, for sure. Uh, that, that, that was the first thing we shot for. Uh, Orlando's always been like a hometown, like, uh, landing spot, like a, for the Jackass brand since the series, the movies. It was almost like. And, and Miami, too, but, but Orlando. Oh, you know what else in, in Orlando? Like like right around here, the, right, the right near that skate, hotel. Skate reflections. Well, the the ball um, pit. There was a like the that there, there's like a lake and they had a, like the the, the the loop to, yeah team pain yeah, came team pain. and and they did the loop to loop the yep. lake jump like stilt boxing happened there like it's crazy we we filmed like so much crap in orlando so if you just go out to a random like uh retention pond you see like a half pipe it could be like a relic from a jackass movie just sitting there uh, you, you never know uh i remember and i still have them to this day this is before like cell phones were doing photos like carrying around a disposable camera the cardboard and, ones yeah, yeah the little the little yellow <laughs> kodak ones and taking pictures of all like going on everything going on behind the scenes and all of our mischievous activities and and the things that these bars and these club owners were letting us get away with it was like murder yeah. and they were excited like normally any we saw people get slightly <clears throat> turned up and get immediately ejected and then meanwhile like just the most ungodly things are happening and everyone's totally fine and excited about it right it, it, it was uh it, it, that place will always the fourth floor will always have like a sweet spot in my mind. And that same, like I was saying, the, the correlation, I met 3-6 Mafia through the Jackass, Dick House, Jeff Tremaine, Rick Hossack, uh company because they got hired to do a music video. Well, they were them. in, uh, they, were, they were in... Jackass number two, I did the rake jump. And I'm guessing that happened in Orlando. I'm guessing 3-6 Mafia came down here. Because we did, we, we certainly Well, no, didn't. I was saying later, I had actually later on in life, like as as I met them with Jeff and Rick, because Rick Kosick was directing a music video for them. And I was helping on the production, doing the casting and stuff. And later in life, I they introduced me to Jelly Roll uh, yeah. A no-name guy that I was asked to come, hey, come, come, direct this music video for us, and then I've become friends with him. And then uh, you got Jackass, Three Six Mafia, Jelly Roll, all the these these people that were destined for greatness that are still 
relevant, still kicking ass and taking One names. One thing, Jelly Roll is uh, like like has blown up oh. recently. Like he he's been steady on the come up, but the last year, two years, it's on. Like I have people come up to me and ask me, "Hey, you ever heard of Jelly Roll?" And I'm just like, I don't know where to start. I'm like, "Yeah, do I ever heard of him? Yeah, fucking, that's that's the that's my brother, that's my guy." His tour is in arenas, huh? Yeah, it. I uh, just went to go see him. Uh, I don't know a month or two ago, and I'm getting goosebumps talking about it because I would see this guy performing for a bunch of dope boys at like a crab shack in Panama City, and now here I am watching. 30,000 people sing every single word. And not only is he making music, but he's making music that speaks to the soul. He, yeah. He's literally like evangelizing out there. He's, he's, he's changing. He's, he's, he's a voice to the people who don't. And he's, uh, he's, he's just fucking killing it. I'm so proud of him and, and yeah. Bunny and everything they've done. And uh, yeah, it's, it's just, uh, I had just thought about that when I thought about that very parking lot. Cause we would all go from Knight's Library and walk across the street to the hotel and all these bars and little restaurants are all in that area. And I had never seen like a movie to where all the talent stays on a floor and there's, you know, a whole production team cutting drywall out and setting up pranks and all these like things going on behind the scenes and the, the magic and the, the the camaraderie of everyone and oh yeah we, we filmed that uh sweatsuit cocktail in that hotel yep. too yeah. i remember getting in trouble with the late great ryan dunn we they had they had they had never had like a bar a mini bar there but they i guess they brought it in for the production and me and him got caught breaking open these mini fridges and stealing heinekens and i don't even drink beer i was just trying to be a little beer pirate and keep the vibes going and you know because that's that was you know that was just like something that thanks to you once again that i was a part of and i got to see all the behind the scenes stuff it helped it helped literally craft even the way i think about the business and some of the things that you would these words of wisdom that that still resonate in my mind about like content in general before they even call it content or people made money on the internet. You were pioneering all that, uh, you know, in a very, very uh, infancy when back in the MySpace days, I remember your, uh, your website, your message board, the Steve-O Army. Ah, uh, yeah. And going there and reading the threads and stuff. And now it sounds like we're dinosaurs talking about this, but people used to, before like social media was a thing, people actually went to a website and you had such a, a strong community of people that were fucking with you. And I just was inspired by what you were doing and seeing how you were doing it. And I got to see uh, a, a lot of, a lot of fucking cool ass things at a very, uh, I mean, you, you were literally doing some of the gnarliest shit with some of the biggest celebrities in the world you were just casually like, yeah, hey, yeah, I got Paris Hilton. We're going to her birthday party. And <laughs> you're tying balloons around your head and spraying beer everywhere. All this crazy shit. The, the list goes on forever. And uh, you've solidified uh, yourself, I believe, in the, in the history books. You are a part of pop culture for the history. Like if they were to send a, uh, like a USB to space to show an extraterrestrial life, Jackass and Steve-O would be on there somehow, <clears throat> some way. Well, thanks, bro. Many adventures together. One, um, one of them that I recall that was very uh, legendary in my mind and heart was it was uh, Bam's bachelor party in Vegas, and he okay. was filming his show, and we were there, and you were there, and and this, like, he had a special suite at the Hard Rock Hotel and Casino that had a bowling alley yep. in his hotel room. Don Vito was there. Um, I'm the one that introduced you to Don Vito for the first time. And I remember telling you, hey, I just want to warn you, he's wasted. And he well, is I mean, everything you think he is, but worse. Yeah, yeah. And, and what else is new? But um, <laughs> the the thing was... Oh man, they, this is something that people don't don't necessarily know. They they I would say they 
they probably definitely don't know. But um, in Jackass 3, they did the Lamborghini tooth pull, pull yeah. where they ripped out uh, Danger Aaron's tooth. That was a reshoot, dude. Yep. The Lamborghini tooth pull initially happened for Jackass number two in 2006. And it made total fucking sense uh, to do it with Don Vito because Don Vito was literally like down to one fucking tooth. He had like a whole mouth and just like one tooth and that tooth was begging to come out. So Bam made a deal with Don Vito like, hey, let me fucking tie that one last tooth to my fucking Lamborghini and, and rip it out. And if you let me do that for the movie, then I'll buy you like dentures. I'll, I'll let you get fitted for dentures. And, uh, and so, the, so they did it. And it was like this classic fucking bit. And I, I want to say like 2006, right before the Jackass number two came out, Don Vito went down for some like lewd and lascivious like... It was, uh, it was basically drunk at like a, a skate park in the middle of the day. And just being ah, like the yeah, typical like, like, Don Vito. Like he, he was seeing like filthy stuff and like yeah, technically, and, yeah. And, and in light of that happening in 2006, they they scrubbed him. It was from, like almost was, a month he, before the movie came out too. It was like right. Yeah, there. Oh, dude, picture was locked. They had to like they had to you know, and they scrubbed him. He was in a bunch of stuff, man. Like um. And and technology wasn't even necessarily there yet. There was a bit in Jackass number two where like it was like bungee cords and they had done in a uh, uh, shopping cart and they pulled it all the way back. And right when they released it, they like bring down the garage door. So Dunn goes crashing into the garage door and Don Vito was standing right there. They fucking painted him out. Yeah. They painted him out of the thing. Like, uh, and and of course, like the the Lamborghini tooth pull, where they pulled out his one last tooth, like they just they uh, deleted that from the movie. So it, it, it but nonetheless, after that tooth was gone, Bam got the dentures, and it was in that uh, in Vegas in the hotel suite that Don Vito had his new uh, dentures that Bam got him, and. Um, <clears throat> And, and, you know, be, because of the fucking child sex vendor thing, like, he couldn't even be on camera. So, like, he, Don Vito was in that bachelor party, but I, I bet you. He was all over everything, him and, wait, and wait, Bam's was, other uncle, Shipper. Did, did they include him in the Bam's Unholy Union? No, well, uh, there was one little fraction of a second at the wedding you see him, but... I remember uh, Ken Parks, he was, like, vice president of business and legal affairs, and him coming over to me personally like mike you have to do me a solid and i'm like yeah hey, whatever you want he's like you have to restrain don Vito. i'm like oh god like y'all like this isn't like a light task so i remember him being like in a chair kind of similar to what we're sitting in now and us taking sheets me and uh joe devito and and uh, the whole like uh basically the viva la bam crew and uh trying to tie him down and restrain him and he's throwing like pool balls at like the medic on set. And I was trying to be like, no, no. Like, yeah, he, I was over here trying to put out fires, but I couldn't do it fast enough because he was always being Don Vito, whether the cameras were there or not. He was always Don Vito. Right. And, and he was in that same chair. And Bam and I had like a, a thing like who could get the dentures out of his mouth or something. <laughs> yeah. Like, give me your. And, yeah. and, uh, like it, I had that footage. And I, I, I shot it on your camera, and that, I remember later that night y'all went out. Like wrestling and I said, the I'm dentures. gonna stay. And I remember editing on. I think it was your laptop, editing like a little cut of it. I don't think that's ever seen like the light of day. I I, I have the footage. It's part of this uh, paparazzi stuntman video that I that I, I had, and uh, I never put it out. Yeah, it's uh. There's a lot of footage that that uh, I've Bam's been. entire bachelor party. There was a train wreck, Don Vito, uh, where everyone was like torn because they were like, "He's family. It's his. It's Bam's bachelor party." But yet, he wasn't allowed to be on camera. Yeah, but he, he was definitely still the center of focus. Other than there was one moment that I recall trying to put out a fire for you, 
when you decided to pick up like a stanchion and throw it at uh, the glass case and security like swarming. I thought, no, 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 that's Steve-O. Hey, we're, you know, we're having fun. And it was the first time I had to look at a giant man and tell him, no, no, the guy just threw that and tried to break it. He's cool. It's, he's cool. Yeah. He's all right. It, it, was, uh, it, was, it was a lot of fun. And speaking of weddings, uh, marriage, you have uh, a very beautiful, supportive, is your partner in crime. I've yeah. never seen a dynamic duo such as what you all have. She has literally has been uh, a, a victim of fecal matter and all kinds yeah. of other crazy shit behind the camera <clears throat> and everything. So she's a, a very talented uh, set designer and stuff. Yeah. The beautiful Lux. Y'all are, are getting married. Yeah. What is a, what is a Steve-O wedding? What does that entail? Because that just sounds like yeah, who knows, the, the, the <clears throat> most craziest guest list, the coolest activities. I mean, I, I don't even know. I, I just know that we've been waiting to get married for a long time. We've been engaged for uh, approaching six years. <laughs> hey, you know, you, you had to, you know, just take yeah, your time. Yeah, trying to look before I leave, dog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just, you know, testing the waters, you know, checking yeah. it out, you know. And and you're uh, pretty convinced now. I mean, yeah, yeah, I'm super convinced. And we made we've made a plan to wait to get married on a big property that we, you know. Like can of, we talk about that so yeah you, for you sure just, man I you bought, just acquired uh, a piece of american I, I, dream I, I just bought a big ass ranch in uh tennessee yeah so and uh, it, it, it's so epic I and, and, seen... and, and like being here at the sausage castle it's it's kind of inspiring like I, i'm just looking around and thinking like what uh ideas can i kind of poach and and uh, i am and, i am here for it i will literally be there. I'll be your. Uh, I'd like first thing I want to do is have carpet bowl. I I told you you can literally have the one I have here. We built we built that our ourselves and it is all yours if you want it. It's a, just it's just a cool fun game, man. Yeah, it's a a game I I played in a foster home at a summer camp, and I it always like resonated in the back of my head. Like I, I felt like it. It kept like whispering every now and then. Every like couple of years, I think about it. And I was like, you know what? I went and researched it and <coughs> found it, and and we made it in a day. And it's a really fun, addictive game. I could imagine your wedding just being like the most romantic slash crazy, uh, but yet I, I feel that. I feel like in most cases the wedding is is for the bride and it's their thing and it is. I don't see you having like a crazy bachelor party or anything. I, I don't think. Uh, yeah, I think bachelor parties are fucking stupid. It it, it 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 seems like the the objective of a bachelor party is to get a guy to cheat on his fiance like one last time <laughs> well know? i must confess i've been a part of a few of them and that's definitely the the typical scenario yeah, yeah like i don't get it i i don't uh I, I i don't want to be a cheater i don't like want like you know it's uh i feel like uh you definitely scored a good one with her because n normally the bros are always like sizing up her the woman right. trying to feel her up fill her out see like what's her vibe but she has been uh more uh she's she's kept you grounded motivated she's down yeah like like i'll say that i i think um everybody who who uh cares about me everybody who loves me um is a big fan of her because uh they they like who i am in my relationship with her like uh, i'm a better just a better guy when i'm with her you know? I've, de I've definitely seen you uh evolve over the years i've seen you at your worst <laughs> and i've seen you now at what i would call your best like i really truly believe uh you've you you've always been an am amazing dude but now i feel like with everything you've been through and 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 you've uh conquered because you've conquered a lot of things you've, you've done things that like that i don't even know how i could ever possibly one of the things i know you 
You've been sober for 15 years. Coming up on 16, man, yeah. But you also have, what do you call it? It's like a, a sex variety Yeah, uh, yeah, thing too? sexual sobriety. So tell me about that. I, I've heard you talk about it briefly. Sure. but oh, I've talked about it at length. Um, I, uh, when, when I went on, um, when I started my comedy tour, I, uh, would at the end of every single show on my comedy tour in the comedy clubs, I would uh, say to the audience, I'm going to take a photo with every single one of you guys that wants one. I'm not going anywhere until I do. So I, like every show that I did would turn into a meet and greet. And the meet and greet was for uh, two purposes. One to send home as many people with the photo of me as I could so that they would post it and say that they enjoyed my show. And two was uh, to find somebody to act out sexually with that night. And uh, it was just like, it was just crazy. I was just on the road just trying to hook up with chicks all the time. And as I approached 40 years old, I thought this is not it, dude. Like this is not the path to being like happy. And so I promised myself I'm going to stop. And I couldn't keep the promise. So, that, that's, like, that's pretty deep and that's pretty serious. And I would be lying. I, I must confess, I, I have, I offer suffer of this uh, problem. I, I've been with the same girl for almost four years. Update At the time this was filmed, Mike Busey was trapped in a four year relationship. Before this episode could air, the relationship finally ended on a chilly, drunken night. Mike Busey has since been spotted on his latest Snapchat account, enjoying life and savagely beating the guts of new sexy scallywags on the reg. If you or any scallies you know are looking to have their guts destroyed by Mike Busey, please contact him immediately. Uh, I enjoy uh, having threesomes and other intimate consensual encounters with other women with her and uh i if i'm completely honest like you are and like we always are it has always been something that i struggle with because i don't have i don't struggle with drugs i don't struggle with alcohol yeah but when it comes to sex that's like that's like the one thing that so that's that that's the kind of uh antics that you're up to in present day it is definitely one of my uh, chemical dependencies that like I reward myself. I don't like to have sex during the day. I don't have I don't like to have sex when there's things to do. It's how I like whether I'm uh, taking care of business myself or participating with sex with my with my girlfriend or with other girls. It's like it's it's one form of. Uh, I must say I have definitely have already come to the first step of admitting I have a problem because uh, if, I, if I'm honest, yeah, I, I definitely feel that it's uh, – I don't know if there's ever enough. Like you, yeah. you could, I could have sex with five girls tomorrow and then next week I'm like, well, what's, what are we doing tonight? And it's something that I've always struggled with and I, I'm not shy about it. I talk about it. It's not like I'm like, oh, yeah, no. Like I get cranky wait, 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 is, if I'm is, not is, if I'm not uh, relieving myself. I I I think there's like an inner um, an inner insecurity that I like to feel uh, desired. Yep. So even it could be the most undesirable lady, God bless her, but just knowing that she finds me desirable makes me feel good. It's like a yeah. an invisible hug. You know, yeah. it's like what some of these girls may feel like when someone comments some, oh, you're so hot. Like, I feel that uh, gratification, that dopamine validation. Yeah. So how, how, do, how do you how do you uh, how do you overcome something such as like I mean, to I me, like, I would be like drugs. Yeah, no problem. But sex. Oh, hold on. Now you now, you, now you're talking crazy shit. Right. So how, I, how do you, how does one get get that under? It was Gross. just a long process, man. Um, I, I I was on the road. I promised myself I wasn't going to hook up with any more chicks. I couldn't keep the promise. Uh, I ended up going to uh, a therapist who specialized in uh, sexual addiction. That guy, uh, you know, 
would would give me basic things like uh, you know. Did they give you a guy on purpose? Because they knew, um, like I could see like a female just being a real distraction. <laughs> like, hey, you should show me what you how what your problem is. You know. <laughs> yeah. Um. I don't. I don't know that that would have would have made a thing that made a difference. But um. But yeah, just like the guy would uh, you know, hey, call me up if you're gonna act, and and I would just, I just couldn't. So he said, all right, you got to go to sex addict rehab. This is what I recommend. So I went to this uh, outpatient sex addict rehab program. That was in 2013. And, um, yeah, dude. And then, uh, then, then I got really psycho about it. You know, like they recommended a period of celibacy, meaning like you don't even. I've heard, I've heard of that word before. Yeah. I've heard of it. That means you don't even service yourself alone. God. Like uh, you just keep everything in. That might be your biggest stunt, stunt to date. <laughs> <laughs> how the fuck? How the fuck did you conquer that one? Well, they 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 recommended that uh, celibacy for like thirty to ninety days, and and I just stuntified it, dude. I was like, I went four hundred and thirty-one. What? The I did fuck? not blow a load for the entire year of twenty fourteen. Were you just like waking up with just jizz dick city? You know what? Like, it, in there were times where uh, I would I would be about to blow a load in my dream, and I was like, "Oh, I can't lose my sexual sobriety." Like, in your uh, dream, you were like, yeah. you, you were cock blocking yourself in your yeah. dream. Uh huh. Oh that's, my dude, god! That's how come uh, I started working with Scott Randolph. So yeah, I've I've heard him talk about this with you. And it's always one of those subjects where I'm like, hey, I got to go, guys. Like, it's like, because I know I got a problem. And, well, and- right, right. Scott Randolph, um, and it, like, again, uh, it was 2013 when I went to the rehab deal. Uh, it was October of 2013. And um, a- a- after the sex addict rehab, I had to go back out on tour. And um, the first trip I went out on, on tour, I brought. Uh, um, like a sober companion guy, like a, you know, like accountability partner. Guy, yeah. An accountability partner. And I've been, I was paying the guy and I was just like, ah, right. and then, and then the next trip, it was this other guy, but I didn't, you know, and it didn't really work out. And then can't come January, 2014, I hit up Scott Randolph and I was like, yo dude, Scott Randolph was, uh, you know, in the, the same situation. Hey, he's a, a fellow brethren of the we like sex too much yeah he's at, he's in the beverage program he's in the the dry goods program and he's in the sex program i, I want to mention one thing is uh a lot of people that i meet that are in the entertainment business there's always that like that shit bag person they have on the team or the shady uncle who's like oh i'm yeah. his manager but between scott and Vinny and Isaac and Paul, like your whole team is so uh, great. And yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty, it's pretty rad. When, man. when I didn't know none of them, because I feel like kind of a, <clears throat> like a jealous boyfriend. Uh, when when you got sober and hadn't seen you for a while, I definitely remember feeling like, damn, I hope he doesn't think I was all fucked up on drugs. Nah, like nah, nah, I nah. felt like, in a way, I was like, damn, uh, I want to see him. I want to tell him I'm happy for him and stuff. But then when I saw like this new crew, I'm like, who the fuck are they? And ah. I was just like, when I met them, it was such a, a breath of fresh air because they they literally are like your whole like support system, your homies, yeah, they're team. Epic. That they're so great and uh, so yeah. yeah, much love to all of them. Yeah, it all started with Scott Randolph, January 2014. I said, hey, I gotta go on this trip to Tennessee, like uh, it's kind of, you know, because I was in comedy clubs, which meant just doing shows on the weekends. <laughs> I was like, we'll, we'll fly out on a on a Wednesday, we'll fly back on a Monday, and um, you know, like, and Scott's response was, I'd, I'd love to go, but I'm kind of tight on cash for for the airplane ticket. He's saying like, I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. like, no, I'll fly you, dude. Like, uh, he's like, oh, shit, yeah. You're totally. gonna fly me to come cock block your weekend? All right. He, he was, uh, he he was like trying to like buy buy his own airplane ticket to come. You know, like I was just like, whoa, rad. I, and and uh, I was like, no, I'll fly you out, and uh, like we'll share a hotel room, 
And um, you know, normally, like, like, like at the time I sold uh, my 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 first book, um, I, I had I had my one book and I and I had a T-shirt, books and T-shirts, and um, and then every every weekend I was looking for an employee of the comedy club to sell the shit for me, and like uh, it was twenty bucks for a T-shirt or twenty bucks for a book, and and I would give uh, like one or two bucks to the. Um, you know, per sale to the yeah percentage the, of it. Yeah. So I was like, sell my like like you know, I'll fly you out there. You sell my merch. You know, you just like you know, keep me accountable and take two bucks a sale. And so uh, Scott comes out there and he's like, man, you only have books and t-shirts. You don't have a credit card swiper. Like he just took over. Next so thing he, you know, we're swiping credit cards. We got hats, posters, fucking like, you know, they, they like in no time we started turning all these comedy clubs into goddamn flea markets. <laughs> oh, I've seen, <laughs> I've seen the thirty-minute uh, merch pitch. Like, oh, y'all guys got comfortable? Come out to the lobby. <laughs> so Scott Randolph is the 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 oil on the fine-tuned machine on bringing your brands. Uh, I mean, we just started out like uh, we started out like that, and we, you know, I mean, one could argue we got like kind of too crazy with it all. Uh, but, I can't wait to hear this. But like at the same time, as as, as we've we've grown up, like uh, as we've built up our business, you know, I've got a, a fuck ton of people who who work for me. I've also you have a got, warehouse. You have like a I whole... know, dude. Now, like, I mean. When you were telling me, we were talking before we got on here earlier, and you were saying, like, when, uh, you know, when, when you're vulnerable and you talk about, like, I was thinking, like, man, you know, like, uh, it's kind of kind of where I'm at, you know, that uh, we, were, we were killing it, selling merch so much that, like, I, I got a warehouse. It was going so well, I got a second warehouse. Staff, the warehouse, all this, all these employees, all this overhead, and, um, you know, over the course of this past year, 2023, you know, interest rates get hiked up. People yeah. don't have the expendable income. Like money is just not coming in the way it was. But my overhead, all my fixed costs. Stays the same. We're not yeah. Higher. And so, dude, I'm ble- I've been bleeding money, dude. Yeah. It's it's fucked up. Yeah, like yeah. And, and I and I work my ass off, dude. Like I have with with the podcast, with all the YouTube content, with the fucking like what what whatever I'm doing, I'm constantly fucking That that's the frustration hustling that and, I can relate to you on because people think, Oh, it's Steve O kick me in the balls and make me laugh. They don't realize that you've been doing this for well over two decades and like y- your recent special and we'll get into that that was self-funded. You don't have a record label. You don't yeah. have a, a studio that's funding, giving you millions of dollars. You're, you're an entrepreneur in the entertainment business. So people, they know the crazy. They, they see you and they vision your legs up in the air with a, with a beer bong on your asshole. But they don't realize the taxes, the payroll, the all the stresses of Dead. taking on the burdens of... I mean, uh, your employees are you're, you're their you're their foundation, and if things aren't good, you know you take on those it's those gnarly. worries. Yeah, I, I just I just closed down the warehouses, man. Like, um, the, I'm I'm going back to uh, third party fulfillment. Uh, dude, I'll, I'll even like I don't even care, man. I'll I'll tell you the the, the whole deal. When uh, you remember like like recently, bam had this rap song and he's like dissing me and yes. and, and then I'm like, oh, you know, and I respond and I'm like, buy the the Chris Pontius and Steve O like wild boys skateboard. You know, we've both signed it. Pontius and I sold more than three thousand of those signed double signed skateboards. And in the month of August twenty twenty three. That's a fuck ton of revenue yet i for all of my different revenue streams for all of the work that i do in the, that same month of august my complete bottom line number was minus eighty six thousand dollars i lost 
$86,000 in the month of August, despite having sold more than 3,000 Chris Pontius and Steve O's signed skateboards because my fucking independent contractors, my fucking commissions, my payroll, my, my fucking rent, like, it, like, the, my, my, my overhead is so fucking bloated that I'm bleeding money like a motherfucker. So and that was my first month that I had no tour. Yeah, I haven't I haven't toured since COVID and I was annually bringing in a very something that was mind blowing. It was life changing. So y you want to continue the brand and, and give it legs and give it yeah. wings and grow it. And you start seeing, OK, this is this is a good move <clears throat> here for business. And it does feel good knowing that you're employing people. It does sure. feel they're especially someone like you and myself, we're in a business that people want to be in. So we're literally saying, all right, you, you want to fucking be in show business? All right, here, motherfucker, here, let's do this. And when they take that leap of faith to come work for us, it's a, they don't know how, what goes on in our minds at late at night when we're looking at the books and we're trying to figure out how we're going to rob from Peter to pay Paul. But they, they see the fun and the excitement like, oh man, yeah, fuck. No one's no one's gonna be sympathetic for someone like you or me when we've done what we've done and, and we are who we are because our our brand and our, and everything we've done is yeah. fun and it's exciting. But it's it's something that uh, definitely gets overlooked because I, I was, like the first time I saw you when you had gotten sober, I think I was just like stressed the fuck out. I just got audited by the IRS and I was just like. I was just so fuck. I had went my uh, most of my professional life not making enough money to be taxed, and then when I just popped up on the radar as like this homeless guy that started making a lot of money, and then then there's like, yo, what the hey, how's it going? And then you're like, oh fuck, and then you're learning to to. I didn't graduate from Harvard with an MBA in business or any of that shit. I had to like learn as an entrepreneur, the mistakes and everything. Well, what's some of the, the biggest mistakes is Lord knows I've made some, there's a mistake. There's a, there's a $50,000 carnival ride outside in my driveway right now that my guy, Miguel Colon Jr. My manager definitely uh, was not feeling when I pur purchased it. However, we've gotten past that. Does but, it work? Oh, it works. It's, it's is one it of my, sick? it's, it's literally every time I get on it, it's like, I say two things. Oh my God, this is what, I worked my ass off for to do this stupid shit and dear God, please don't let this be the day that it falls apart and someone dies. That's what I fucking say. It's like Disney world and sausage castle. Like you don't die here. You die off the property. So saying that, what have you made? If you could talk to yourself 10 years ago, like on financial, let's talk some finances. Is there something, uh, a business uh, endeavor, something that you did that you wish you had had not done the the way it happened um i uh invested in 2000 um flare 8 stevo custom bump boxes i'm very familiar with the brand and uh that it's just a, that's a 400 hundred dollar price point i i thought that uh well shit it costs the same as um as uh you know the fancy headphones that everybody's got people are, like we're walking around with 400 dollars headphones everywhere you look and th this but this like works as a karaoke machine and you know with the microphone it's a pa system and it's fucking big and badass and fucking super loud like i got all excited about it and um those things were tough to sell, man, just because they're just sheer bulkiness and and they're like, not easy I, to carry back and forth to a merch table and not travel easy to around. Carry, not easy to carry back to dear fucking Jesus. It uh, did I buy two? No, I think I don't. Sorry, I bought one thousand of them. S still, one thousand of those was way too fucking much. I bought two thousand pairs of uh, Stevo branded America shoes. And uh, we had a tough time selling those too. So uh, well, at least you didn't spend a bunch of money on an NFT or something or some Bitcoin thing, did you? No. Okay, good. 
because I, I started to get worried for a second. So at least I, you'll have. I mean, dude, there are people who did very well with uh, Bitcoin. I mean, my, my, my man Skinny Vinny is talking about he, he did all this uh, buying like drugs on uh, the dark the web on S Silk, Silk Road. Road yeah. He, he bought and he bought all of those drugs on Silk Road uh, with Bitcoin at a time when one Bitcoin was $100, he says. Yeah. And uh, I'm like, whoa, dude, did like, like, uh, I, I'm such dumb. It's been so long since I got high. I, I, I asked him, uh, so did, how, how much did, like, uh, how much did, was Bitcoin at when you sold your Bitcoin? He goes, no, I didn't sell my Bitcoin. I bought drugs. And I was like, oh, yeah, yeah that's <laughs> Yeah, so he spent what could be now. <laughs> God knows how much and on drugs. Like, had yeah, you kept I mean, you think it's true. Yeah, if you take the the total amount of of Bitcoin that he spent on drugs, and like, but if he just kept it in Bitcoin and cashed it out when it hit sixty thousand, it's crazy. So I mean, I don't know, dude. I don't know. Um, like, I, I can't say that. Uh, that that I regret too much when it comes to the financial stuff. I mean, like I've I've been reckless, like giving away, like you know, you get you, you get twenty percent of this, you get to, you know. You've like, always been very generous with that. My uh, my my commission structure is fucking stupid, dude. It's my it's uh like I like I uh, I I always honor my word, and I just fucking I'm too quick to blurt out like oh I'll give you this. I only sleep at night because I tell myself, well, if there is a heaven. And if I don't get in that motherfucker based on the pure heart of gold I have, then then shut it down because I don't want to be there. I have, <clears throat> and, and this is coming from someone who never had anything, and I I still probably have a couple deals going on right now that I'm like I should definitely say, hey man, it's time to we gotta we gotta rearrange this because this ain't this ain't working. I've had uh, you know people steal shit, lie, plot. Uh, try to sabotage certain things and you know uh, I, I was very w with my money I, I suffered that you know Peter Pan syndrome shit like you don't have to look very far from this 80 acres to see shit that I probably shouldn't have bought but for some reason it uh, I don't know if it's another psychological issue I should deal with maybe I should call Scott Randolph and he can direct me to the proper facilities but uh, it is some somewhat therapeutic when I design or decorate or build something and people come over and they get excited. Like yeah, I got so I mean, excited when you lit up about the carpet ball, when you leave, I'll be like, bro, I told you we should have built that. Look, he fucking loved it. And that's the type of thing that I don't regret because it well, kind of keeps giving. Right. I mean, there's like, I, I, I'm not like a like a, a flashy guy where I'm trying to like, you know, like everything I wear, I wear t-shirts, I wear jeans that I buy at Target, you know, like that's my my deal. Like I, I like my my car, like I've never been like a I'm gonna sp drive a fancy car. Like putting money back into to, to my business, you know, like I mean I, I bought my my podcast van, probably the best. A fucking investment I've ever made. I love that fucking van. I think you are able to. I bought my like, tour bus, my my yeah. uh, my my fucking piece of shit RV that I wrapped with my Stevo stuff. Like, but it, I, it I love all, that thing. It's it's those things that help the business that right bring that experience. Are you able? Uh, you're able to bring Stevo to the world and and do it in your own dynamic way, to where you can't just pack up a shitty astronaut and an old school TV and a car and pull up and then just do it. Your, your, uh, your podcast is, is, is so amazing. And all the guests you've had on there real quick though. One thing about the business stuff, it, it reminds me, um, Steve Harvey had a teacher that, uh, used to like, be like, boy, you ain't never gonna be in no damn TV, boy. Would you, would you all dreaming and come, you know, come back to reality? And he's like, oh, I'm gonna be on TV. I'm gonna be on TV. And later in life, he, uh, he has that like petty gene that I think we both kind of have. And he sent his teacher a TV every Christmas to remind 
uh, her that he is on TV, and then and she just kept getting TVs every year. And I, I I've heard a story of an ex girlfriend that you would yeah. send footage <laughs> of like as you were uh, breaking time. through to the other side. Well, I'm I not think even that's been, amazing. Not even breaking through to the other side. Like like uh, I would send her uh, this this girl who dumped me when I was uh, you know. Uh, 19 I, she dumped me um and uh like it, i wasn't breaking through anything i was just like tr just trying to fucking film rad stuff and get you know do, do awesome stunts and i would send her a new videotape every year of like the what i like my best shit that i did since the last videotape i sent the year before and after a few years it did start turning into like you know, f clips were taken from actual videos where there were like some graphics mixed in, and like you know, it, it got it started to get kind of professional, and it was rad. I, I but yeah, I, super petty. I resonate <laughs> with that. I, I can literally hear the echoes. You're I'm, a fucking loser, Mike. You'll never do shit. And I probably maybe many years ago sent an ex girlfriend a photo of me and you. I'm like, yeah, bitch, I'm hanging out with Steve O. Oh. Fuck you. You ain't shit. And 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 it turns into. I feel like at first it's a healthy motivator and then it becomes toxic because I kind of went through that with having nothing. And then you kind of want to be like, you're like the fat girl who got hot at prom. You're like, yeah, you didn't want to finger fuck me at prom. Look at me now. Y'all ain't shit. And right. I went through that, but now I'm, I'm well into the phase of my life to where now I want to be humble about it and be like, Hey, I'm not mad. And, and you learn to forgive and, and, and really, realize that they were dealing and they were projecting some type of negative yeah, thing. Yeah, I mean, and it's not even to say that uh, I wanted this girl to, like, feel bad or anything. I just wanted her to know that I was fucking rad. <laughs> you, know, like, you know, like... I can only uh, imagine uh, every <laughs> every year she got uh, uh, literally a, a, a tape in the mail and she popped and she it would, up. And she would watch him. She would watch him and she'd be like, fucking way to go. That's killer, you know, like... That is that is beautiful. She'd show them to her brother who was stoked on it, you know? Like, it was it was, it was was cool, man. It was, a good, it was a good vibe. I hope wherever she is out there, I hope she still has the tape. She's or, in Florida. That's that's beautiful. That is. It's, that been, is, it's been a long, long time since I since I spoke with her. Um, well, maybe but, we should send her a tape of your brand new bucket list special yeah. that you just I, I wrapped up a tour. Yeah, you were out for years. You went all over America, up into Canada, Australia, and everywhere. Um, yeah, that that is something that most people will never experience. You've been touring your entire life, even since before Jackass. Well, you know, I, I wasn't touring before Jackass. I worked in the circus. Before correct. Jackass, well, I was going to say was, that, but you already knew that. And some, yeah. You know, I, some I, things I, have I to was, say I, to the audience. I, I worked in a, 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 as a live performer in front of a live audience. You You've know, always for, been a star, but now you've solidified it with yet another successful tour that you've traveled all around the world the bucket list tour i've yeah. experienced it in multiple ways dude I, I loved it man like you you came out to uh was it south carolina yes. Greg greensboro we went, uh me and miguel and my buddy chris here uh we went we drove up to charleston charleston yeah okay and uh we uh we saw you there and i saw the footage and uh i was like, wow it was epic and and that was where uh you started taught you, you told me in Charleston about your CPAP machine. Correct. So and, if 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 any of y'all ever wonder what does Steve O and Mike Busey talk about, we talk about a lot of cool things, but we're like, all right, whatever. We I get on to the serious, did. serious business of the CPAP brothership, the bro ship of CPAP. And, I, and I'll have you know I've been sitting here dying to take a piss for like this entire time. So talk to me about Flomax now. Yeah. So uh, as I started to, to make a little money, I was like, hey, maybe I should get my health in order. <laughs> you know, I'd like to live a little longer so I can spend some of this shit. And uh, I, was, I quickly realized I was falling apart and I needed medical attention. And uh, not only did I have CPAP or uh, sleep apnea, but I also realized that I had uh, an enlarged uh, prostate to where it was causing flow issues to where frequent urination correct so i would frequently want to urinate 
But then when I get there, I'm pulling on my little fucking turtle dick. And I'm, I'm literally like, it's ready to go, but it's not going even when I got it, you know, pulled right. out. And I'm like, come on, little fella, you can do it. And yeah. it's like, yeah, like I tell, slowly I tell my girl, I tell my girl I'm sitting here on the toilet forever. And then it's like, I'm like, it's the, and then a sad, pathetic dribble. Yeah, and it takes a hot minute for the, I call it the, the backing up of the river. The river has to like get up to the dam and then you got to finally let the floodgates of urine go. And this is a, a problem. And I feel that we've definitely been ambassadors to men's health. Instead of uh, shying away from it, we've we've uh, evangelized to the people that it's okay to accept your age and to know that there's going to be things malfunctioning and sleep apnea and urination issues. Manny, I self-diagnosed him one day at a rest stop. We were torn around doing crazy shit with snakes and alligators. And um, I would do this thing where I called it, I called it celebrity shitters. And I would run in on people on the, on, in the, on the, in the stalls with the camera and one day I get Manny and he's just like, uh, Busey, uh, Busey, is that you? I was like, yeah, what's up, Manny? You all right? He's like, yeah, just uh, trying to pee. And then as I'm hearing, I'm like, hey, oh, hey, you got prostate problems? And he's like. But, but, but I went to a urologist about frequent urination and I, I, I think he stuck his finger up my butt maybe. Every, every time a doctor has stuck their finger up my butt, they've said that prostate is not, not a problem. Prostate's cool. Well, I'm and, a virgin of that department. That's one part where I've kept my uh, promise ring on the anus. <laughs> <laughs> My promise, my promise ring on the anus is st- that game's still going yeah, strong. Is, is your bottle empty right there? Uh, it it it, it can be. Yeah. You can, uh, you want to hand me that uh champagne uh goblet ice thing? Uh, I also have this problem. So, <laughs> and, and and this, I just want to say this. This is not one of our official sponsors, but the last time I was with Stevo, uh, in the back of his bus, he he sent me an Amazon uh item. Where it was basically oh, yeah, a portable yeah, yeah. urinal tube, <laughs> and see, I it's wish a, my dick was big enough to actually a, <laughs> to bend it into something. I would pee on my face. It, it's not. It's a, a. It's a portable, like a medical urine, uh, like a pee bottle, and it's got a hose. The last time I seen you, you were laying in the back of your bus, peeing into your your portable contraption where it looked like it was a CPAP machine and it had a hose and went down to a reservoir and you, all you could say is, I told you, you better buy this shit. It's game changing. <laughs> and then I remember like a month later, you're like, did you buy it yet? And now I'm like, I started telling my guys, I'm like, oh, I didn't buy it yet. He's coming. Oh, shit. So I, oh, this yeah. will be the last, this this week I will purchase the God. The, the motherfucking urinal. <laughs> yep, he's peeing, folks. And that's a fucking healthy load. Do you mind if I uh, double down on you, too? Get in there. I'm gonna have to, do you mind if you pass the, the, the bucket? Yeah. I'm gonna, I might have to get down a little bit here. See, my dick is so small that I actually don't even uh, pull it to the top. I have to just like, so, pull my, it to the side here. On my way over, I went to the CPAP store. And uh, I'm always drinking coffee out of um, my Contigo thermos. Oh, hold on. Here we, here we go. All right, go ahead. And uh, when I finish my coffee, then I unscrew the thermos and fucking piss in it. <laughs> so it goes back and forth between coffee and piss. So I think the moral is don't drink unknown liquids around us. <laughs> and I remember being in the back of the bus. This is like a couple months ago in Tampa. And I remember being like, wow, I'm watching Steve-O pee into some type of medical device thinking I also did the same medical device. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, there we have I feel there. so much better now. So do I. Uh, I, I, I would be lying if I told you that was the first time I had to urinate into a, a bucket during these podcasts. <laughs>
this is a very special podcast because after all the years of doing this, me and Miguel Colon Jr. and my team, this is the first time we've had a guest. So you are the very first guest there to ever be on this, whatever this becomes. The Mike Beasy Show. And uh, I am extremely... Uh, how about, so how about Sausage Radio? Or... Yeah, I, I feel like uh, I wish I could go back in time and not name it the Sausage Castle. Oh, yeah. It is the worst name you could wow. ever think of. It's, it's epic, dude. It's just uh, many years ago, seven dudes living in one house. So I love called it. it. You know, you hear it and you don't forget it. That's the one thing good. Yeah. But then you question. Do, like, you, oh. do you really wish it wasn't called the Sausage I you wish, want to be out the, the 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 radical dudes fucking yeah like I, I wish I could have I wish the marketing team would have emailed me when we started sending out the flyers of the Sausage Castle and we we basically uh, deboed Outcast's Cadillac logo and just said fuck it it's the Sausage Castle and it went uh, on a flyer back before social media and then unfortunately that is the the. <laughs> Here I am, twenty three plus years later, with stuck with it. You had uh, my old roommate Schliz. Yeah, Schliz. Uh, so Schliz, are you still in contact with them? Yeah, I still, I still talk to him. I love everything. that guy. So, for those who don't know, uh, if you go back and watch MTV Cribs, you'll see this buff Jack, like he uh, was like a the, male the, stripper. He was a male stripper and uh, an ex United States Marine. Yep. Um. And he's he's also a person that's literally my like, entire life has been around the the the, the, the production Steve world, orb of, yeah, yeah, like the, like like reality TV and like producing different stuff and like he's not now like his his work security. Yeah, like, now he's doing like stuff for like Little Baby and a bunch of other big, yeah, well known rappers he's and artists. Nice guy, man. He's just always been just a good. He, he guy. lived with me at Sausage Castle Seven, the one before this, and. He, he used to tell me uh, a story that I guess some like scallywag came over like one weekend to come hang out with y'all at, at y'all's apartment. Oh, one of the, uh, you had three or so at the time. And uh, he, he told me that this girl came and then she was just like a piece of shit and she had like a cat with her. And y'all wind up like adopting the cat. Yeah, that was his Lu- cat Lucifer. Lucifer. Yeah. Yeah. So, we called him Lucy. Yeah, so Lucifer it was, it was lived at, uh, the old Sausage Castle, and he used to joke around with me. He's like, "My my my cats had more airtime on TV than you have." Ah, and, and Lucifer, uh, we Dude, had a love hate relationship. When Lucifer was was uh, like, we barely had him that long. Like Schliz is is out, out of the apartment, or whatever. Like I'm alone in the apartment, and uh, and and I'm on the sofa, fucking jacking off. And fucking, I'm in the mid-stroke, and Lucifer just fucking <laughs> whoop, buries a fucking cat claw, like mid-shaft. Oh, my God. Like, it, I'd like, never jerk off in front of a cat. <laughs> <laughs> Words of wisdom, folks, you've heard it here. Never jerk off from a cat, Steve-O. I can imagine trying to tell the next... Uh, fortunate lady no no i swear it's not herpes it was a cat it was a cat injury i was, was jacking <laughs> this cat attacked me i promise it's not herpes baby i promise you, you uh for those who don't know uh you had like these three apartments they've one like uh well, one was a skate park one was uh like uh you know my solo bachelor pad one was like a called it an office and we would edit footage of me you know like and then the fourth one was for jen moore the who was my assistant at the time and all my assistant did was just rebook flights that i missed yeah it's somebody's got to do it (laughs) you had the most coolest interior because i i lived on your couch for a good two weeks and I remember it was at the the height of you going through your uh, it, substance abuse issues. Yeah, so, so the 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 sofa there, there was a double decker sofa, yeah. and it was all animal. You print. had a sofa underneath here, and then you had a, a sofa above, and you had leopard, just like my shirt I'm wearing. All carpet, animal print, tiki bar, the coolest vibe. I like. I always. I never been a super fan of apartments, but I felt so at home there. Until you walk into the bathroom and you pull your your dick out and you had one of those fake little cameras on the back of the toilet. And every time it would get me, I'd go to pull my dick out and I'd hear. 
was it was like one of those like bullshit Chotsky fake camera things, and I just just would laugh every time, and I would just get such a chuckle out of it, and uh, watching you uh, battle it with your neighbors, and I remember yeah, that you dude. had this giant fucking mastiff dog that I thought like look a yeah. horse that lived like a couple doors down, and I because it was like my first like time seeing like what LA life is and and Rick would take me out uh like show me all the sites and stuff and I, I just like that's like the closest I ever really got to like experience that whole like Hollywood energy and yeah I don't and know seeing dude. The streets was, of LA like my apartment complex was some pretty low level Hollywood energy but uh no it was, it was a vibe it, it, I mean, it was it was epic times man it was uh it, it was definitely a legendary <laughs> uh spot and thank you for letting me crash there yeah dude, and for uh sure. yeah man it, it was a, a lot of uh a lot of good times were had there but yeah um I I wanted to uh what so you acquired this new property in yeah. Tennessee, and so what's uh I, I don't know what you've you've we're been cool with talking slow, about man. yeah we're we're just taking it slow dude um we uh the idea is to to have an animal sanctuary we inherited a pig with the property as well as a cat so like technically we've got our farm our first farm animals um. We're going to have a lot of animals no matter what. And it, it just kind of depends on the the way that the next couple of years go, whether uh, it remains um, kind of a private place, whether it, it, it becomes uh, something that, you know, we, we publicize. Uh, uh, we, we don't really know. Maybe it'll be more of like a doomsday prepper grow your own food kind of uh, build bunkers well God. the way the way things are headed it might be that before it'll be a a, a, a yeah. animal sanctuary the the what's your whole mindset on the the culture as of recently with the woke stuff and the people as the quote-unquote woke and the yeah. the cancel culture and a, a lot of the stuff you see now <clears throat> online because with you being who you are i feel like you're such an easy target, but yet you're not because you're so uh, loving and embracing to everyone. H have you have you had to see? Have you ever had to second guess? Like, oh, maybe we shouldn't put this out. Maybe this is too too gnarly. Or... <clears throat> I wouldn't say that. Like, where, where I've decided not to put things out was motivated by cancel culture or or wokeness. I think that there's just there's been like. A handful of videos that that I made that um that just didn't make sense to to put out just because they they weren't they were not a good look. Um, I don't even mind saying, but one of them was uh, I made a video out of um like uh the two weeks or so that uh, that I had Bam on tour with me and uh in uh the beginning of twenty twenty three. Um, he he was in, like in uh great spirits. He was in a good place, but it just kind of ended up on a bad, funky vibe, and there just wasn't like a good, you know. I it was, uh, just, it, was a, it was a bad look to put that video. Out. I didn't put it out. I always picture myself as like when it comes to the bros <laughs> to be like the mediator. Bam was here three weeks ago, sober. I'm, I'm great sure spirits. that he wasn't talking bad about me. No, right not today. at all. Like, yeah, and uh. I, I, this is my opinion. Even though I shot him a text, I didn't even have his number for the longest time. Well, and I have, I have his new number, but it changes so often because they'll just give it to somebody and you know how that game goes. But I, I know when the moment's right, that y'all will, I don't, I don't think yeah, it's anything I mean, don't serious think anyways. The internet I, likes to make it more than it is. He's not, and, he's not mad at me. I'm not mad at him, yeah. but I shot him a text. Somebody gave me his new number and he didn't respond. He literally just got a new number like a week ago because he was like blowing my phone up, asking me to send him like RVs and stuff. And then I would send him stuff and then he like stopped. And then I talked to the Dern. It's like, yeah, he just got a new number. Mama Dern. She kind of like also was like the mediator between the, the, the village. And yeah. uh, for a lot of people like to get worked up and make it more than it is. 
y'all are y'all are bros and y'all are uh, family. Yeah, dude, for and sure. bros brothers fight and it's no big deal. Any nothing nothing serious. And, yeah, I'm not uh, tripping. I uh, but I'm not I look tripping. forward to that that yeah. being a, a thing in the past. There 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 uh, there there will be, I'm sure, at some later point in the future, an appropriate way to uh, put out um, rad footage because there was a lot of fun. Fun and funny. Like I remember uh, you uh, getting a text about a certain video you sent to Bam Sleepin, who also is a part of the CPAP brother. And yeah. Just like, we're, all, we're all just dying and we all I, need I CPAP. Say, I say, yeah, that was from, from that time. God, yeah. like, he, I worried, like, out of all the concerns with the, you know, like, yeah. the health risks, I think Bam's sleep apnea is so severe. Well, not this. He came here two or three weeks ago, but before that, he he came. Yeah, didn't and you sent me a photo of him on your thing in my bed for like six hours, and I was like, God, that's how I sound when I don't have my machine. I was like, Oh man, and it sounds, you know, you're basically strangling, strangling, dying of suffocating of yeah. lack of oxygen, and uh, yeah, you know, so we need that uh, CPAP sponsorship. We need to. Uh, <laughs> I, yeah, your you're next right. tour bus is going to be wrapped in CPAP and Flowmax. <laughs> it's fucking. It, it's it's ironic. The first int- the intro to Jackass with all of y'all, uh, or not the intro, the the closing when y'all. Oh, are, when even rolled. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Son of Jackass. Y- y'all are. You are still at it, and you've evolved and maneuvered in such a way that. I can't name anybody, very few people that are still relevant and still doing continuously bigger and better things. So I think you've solidified your... I mean, dude, your... like it's, it, it's, uh, it, it's crazy how many um, like just personalities that, that uh, ha- have endured. Yeah. What, what did, uh, I know a lot of people saw the movie. And I seen it. I had my notes. The uh, the the most recent Jackass, Jackass Forever. Yeah. Okay. What was there? Was there anyone or was there anything that you were like, damn, what the fuck are we doing? Why why do we have this guy or why do we have this person? And I'm not asking you to say any <clears throat> names, but I'm <clears throat> sure as the collective group, it's always been y'all. So the 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 dawning of bringing in new fresh meat, you've always had guests and stuff. And, yeah. Uh, uh, was it was it uh, weird for you? Because in, in my in my mind, and I'm we, sure like the OG cast like hated the idea. Yeah, I I would I would assume so. Yeah, uh, like it was like the the creators, the you know the the executive producers are. Jeff Tremaine, Spike Jones, Johnny Knoxville, and they were all dead set. We're gonna bring in fresh blood, younger, younger talent. They're like, listen, and we don't got enough think, CPAPs and Flowmax around here. We're gonna have to fucking bring in some fresh meat. And all the all the rest of us OG cast members who are not creators and executive producers were like, oof, we don't love that. But um, as much as we didn't love it, um. It was impossible for us not to fall in love with the new cast members as soon as we met them. They were just like, you know. I, I met uh, uh, Zach, uh, and I, I I liked his vibe and his energy, and 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 I am not anyone to to be the judge or anything. But I like to think in my own mind. I watch from a distance, thinking like, no, we'll take him. No, <laughs> and, and you kind of want to. You I almost think, in your mind pick who you think is deserving of I such mean, honor because who in the I mean, last it's a, it's 20 weird, years. It's a weird thing, man. It's a weird thing. Like, um, especially when, like, you've got these people who are, are basically like fans, you know? Like, it's almost like. Uh, the first meet and greet movie in the history of Hollywood. It was like, hey, yeah. these are the guys you love, and now it's time to be them. Right. Like, uh, there's almost a dynamic of where, like, uh, what, like, maybe Jason Newstead, when he joined Metallica, he was like, dude, I can't believe it. I'm in, Met- I'm in Metallica. You know, like, and they were like, I don't even know if that was the Jason Newstead story, or maybe it was John Karabi when he came into Motley Crue. He was like, I can't believe it. I'm in, they're like, just chill, dude. Like, don't be a fan. Like, just be in the band. You know, like, um, and, uh, 
<laughs> it just feels weird that, um, like, to me, the most terrifying thing that could, the, the most terrifying situation you could be in is to be famous and broke. You know, like, and, and uh, to, 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 bring people who who aren't like really established in their own right and make them part of this big franchise and do so in a fashion where they're not really being paid like you know like it it, it just feels like kind of a uh, lopsided like and 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 my concern is that um maybe they maybe they, they aren't like well suited in the best position to take advantage of the opportunity given to them and that like you're gonna i don't it's just a weird position to put people in I, i'm very honest and and i'm not asking you to co-sign any of this but uh, I, I feel like that i would probably speak on behalf of other people also thinking this there were uh, one or two that i felt okay they deserving of joining this brotherhood <laughs> But then there was some, and I'm just like, what did y'all just fucking run out of fucking people that day? You just pick some random guy off the fucking set? Like, hey, craft know. services, get over here with those tongs. We got we got this thing. We're going to put a snake in your ass. Like, I, I was kind of like looking at it like, mm, all right, uh, okay. But I, I, mean, I, I feel like, that it's still, it's still. The movie had its moments, man. That, uh, that fucking Silence of the Lambs shit, I left. I don't know that I ever laughed as hard at, at another bit. It, it uh, I definitely. Uh, it had its moments, man. Like, I don't think there are any bad jackass movies. Nothing's ever gonna be as epic as Number Two was. I, I Number Two will always. Uh, number be Two is my just favorite. like they, you know, there was no point in doing anything after Number Two because. You know. Saying that, uh, do you think there will be a fifth? I, I can't picture it. And we we've probably all thought that <laughs> right. I bet, yeah, but like, I can't picture it. But God, I could never have pictured that after ten years of no Jackass, there would be Jackass Four. It's uh, it's it's something <clears throat> crazy to 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 know that you were literally a, a part of pop cultural uh, societal. Maybe one day s someone's gonna see like a hieroglyphic of you in a cave somewhere. And yeah. you're lighting your balls on fire, and they're trying to contemplate, interpret it, whether it's some ancient alien using some uh, fucking wizard fucking fire yeah, shit. Who knows? And I, I, I uh, I'm just, uh, I think they couldn't have had a better person to be a part of it, and seeing how you evolved, and and how you were deserving of everything you've gotten and everything well, thanks, you got man. coming to you, and uh, I, I just. I don't know what to say other than I love you and I'm I'm super proud of you and I'm I'm glad that uh, I was able to be a part of your your latest project, the bucket list. Oh my god, dude! It couldn't happen without you, dude. Like, well, uh, it definitely could have. But yeah, but, I, but like the the whole opening sequence happened at the Sausage Castle. It was fucking a huge gamble, man. It was such an expensive shoot with the helicopter for fucking like. I don't know if I forget how many thousands of dollars per hour the helicopter was, but we had the fucking thing flying all day. We had like yeah. It, uh, I mean, my it, neighbors it, were like, "Uh, are it's like <clears> at eight a.m. Are you flying uh from a helicopter?" I'm like, "No, that's Stevo." And then they're just like, "Oh, okay." And then watching you hold on to a rope ladder, flying around, and doing the most craziest shit. I mean, you literally. I mean, there's pyro, there's props, there's there's production, there's stunt coordinators. You have a whole team and staff. Yeah, it was, and it was a gamble. We didn't even know if it was going independently. Work. This, there, had, there, yeah, there, there wasn't no, no, you know, Paramount wasn't there yeah. with a fucking camera crew. We didn't know if it was going to work, and it fucking worked, man. And it worked like so some of the stuff that that I had planned didn't work, and some of the stuff that that you just on your own initiative. I, it was never part of my plan to have employees from the telephone company come in and install fucking telephone poles and, and uh, like whatever you call the trans whatever boxes. We still have them on the front porch, yeah, the transformers. Like, transformers. Like, and, and uh, with the special effects to rig it so that like the, all the sparks fly when I go through the electrical wire. Like, and that saved the fucking day because I had invested like $10,000 in balsa wood 
to fucking like have a billboard that I got crashed through, and it was a shit show. It didn't work. Yeah, it. Uh, I I was, I remember trying to throw my two cents in, but I was like, all right, Mike, this is not your production. I mean, dude, but then you're, great. you're like, yo, you gonna do it? I'm like, oh shit, uh, we gotta pull, uh, we gotta pull this out of our ass, and immediately. I got off that Zoom call, and it was like the most casual Zoom call. Have you ever been on a business Zoom call with Steve-O? And all these people were like, all right, yeah, so the helicopter's going to come up from the northeast, and then we're going to pick them up on the route. This whole crazy thing. And I was like, all right, uh, we got to fucking figure this out. And then within within 48 hours, we had did this whole thing, and I, I couldn't have done it without my team. If it wasn't for uh, everyone here and – uh, my whole crew, shit. I'm I'm only as good as my team, just like you. So I I'm grateful for all of them that helped, and I'm grateful that we got a chance to be a part of some of your cinematic history. That one day Damn. some alien will fucking download, or some a, there'll be some AI rendition of this of you flying around in a helicopter, yeah. and it was uh, absolutely beautiful. For those who haven't seen it, it is a, a roller coaster of emotions, and you can see it at stevo.com, and it is not for the faint of heart. You literally uh, were on the brink of death in a few scenes, but there's one thing that I don't know why this one fucked me up more than any of it, because I was just, I was just like, why, why? And that was the fucking cauliflower ear. Yeah. You you you, you took an <laughs> epidural. You fucking did this. You did that. You jacked off out of a plane, but the cauliflower ear. Every time I've seen it, I was just like, why? Why? No, no, no. Come on. We could have. No, 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 no. That, yeah, that shit it just ended fucked up, me up. Like, it ended up so perfect because I don't have cauliflower ear, but like, the, I the, just could Having the greatest mixed martial artist of all time blast my ear apart with a hammer was, uh, I mean, that is just fucking epic. After seeing that, I don't even know where next but next is another another tour slash special you're going to be doing called the un gone. untitled gone too far yeah the gone too far tour that's my plan i've heard a couple uh yeah. couple things yeah. <laughs> i can safely say he's gone too fucking far so uh, yeah you want to you want to give us a couple little things or tell us something that you have in works I'll just say that I have a lot of conflict going on between uh, my team, my loved ones, my family. <laughs> and uh, I'm not going to listen to any of them because I've got my plan and I'm going to go through with it. But um, that's going to happen gradually over the course of the next six months. What do you want your legacy to be? What, what, what do you, if you could paint it perfectly... What does the Steve-O <laughs> legacy look like to you in a perfect world if you could, were able to put out what exactly you wanted? What does it look like? I mean, I don't know. Um, I uh, am pretty happy to have uh, provided entertainment. You know, I've, I've gone to great lengths to distract people from their problems. My legacy is that um, I was a, a a professional distraction therapist. That you have been. Yeah. You you haven't cured cancer, but you definitely, in in the moment someone was consuming your yeah, content, you I'm, distracted them from such. I don't fix anybody's problems, but I do distract people from their problems, and I think that's a a, a, a noble service in and of itself. Do you have you ever uh, thought about what a Stevo funeral is? Have you ever <laughs> you ever seen the movie uh, Man on the Moon, where Andy Kaufman at the end like basically makes everyone stand up and watch a video? It's almost like a, a, a Stevo comedy special. You got them all singing along and everyone's watching this. D d have you ever contemplating doing your, your final cu curtain call thing? Is, does it something that you want? Have you ever contemplated such some type of uh, final like instructions? Like Lux breaks open a seal, and then there's like all these instructions, and there's uh, a budget, and everyone has to like you know make sure these things happen at your funeral. Like, cause I could see you having nah. one of the gnarliest funerals ever. Nah, I wouldn't be too worried about it. Well, maybe maybe I'll. 
talk to Lux and we got to get to yeah. planning some fun things because I could just see that being like a, a very magical thing because you're one of the coolest motherfuckers ever. I love you. And, I love uh, you too, bro. I don't know what else. There's there's so much to say. Thank you so much for coming over and uh, letting me sit down with you. And uh, I love it, dude. Thank you for all the Taco Bell and the Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. That was Buttercups Matt and... from Hornblaster.com always blessing us. And and my whole team here, they always, uh, your family here as always. And uh, thank you so man, much. And uh, I love it, man. Thank you, brother. And I congrats on all of your success and, and all, of, all of your brand and, and your legacy and uh, on your own shit let's continue to get old together and piss yeah. in buckets and <laughs> yeah, keep it. our c packs in check and let's, let's i call it, it i call it my, my my girl and i we call it my pap smear yeah. <laughs> i love you dude yeah i love you too dog <laughs> ladies and gentlemen steve O. <laughs> love you brother yeah dude Welcome to the Sausage Castle, the wildest home in America. A private 80-acre estate located only minutes from Walt Disney World just outside of Orlando, Florida. The home of the party legend and self-made entertainment entrepreneur, Mike Boosie, who has hosted the wildest and craziest parties and events for the last 20 plus years. You have seen us featured on Netflix, TMZ, MTV, Vice, and much more. A second home to many of the biggest entertainers, athletes, and rock stars in the business. You never know who will show up. A place to play, work, and create. Countless movies, TV shows, and music videos have been produced and filmed at the Sausage Castle. This 80-acre entertainment complex has anything and everything you could imagine. Endless fun and wild activities to enjoy. This is the ultimate Florida experience and it's always a good vibe. It's like an adult summer camp where the pursuit of life, liberty, and happiness is alive and well. Come experience it yourself. Become a member of MikeBusey.com.